Good morning. This is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Our service of morning prayer is from the Church of England's worship book. And I'm Bishop Barry Clark here in the chapel of St. Hilda and St. Luke's and St. Thomas, sharing this time with the people in the parish of Trinity Church Elmer and with you as we meet together. So we pause to collect ourselves and in our own way to acknowledge that we are in the presence of God, whether it be in this chapel, or in your home, or elsewhere. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Lord our God, Redeemer and King of all, to you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made. May Christ, your light, ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. God is the Creator and Redeemer of all. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God is the creator and redeemer of all. O come, let us worship. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 135. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is lovely. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. He brings up rain clouds from the ends of the earth. He sends out lightning with the rain, and brings the wind out of his storm. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion, who dwells in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We praise you, gracious God, and we bless your holy name. 
because you have taken pity on your servants. You have preserved us from falsehood and deceit. You have given us a rich heritage and made us your own possession in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Colossae, beginning to read at verse 15. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the world. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Paul's letter to the church in Colossae is believed to have been written by one of Paul's disciples. And he tries to and attempts to continue the same themes that Paul himself wrote about. And in this particular letter, he incorporates an ancient liturgical hymn and adjusts it to speak of the Christ. And what he highlights here is something that more and more scholars of the New Testament and those who are seeking a richer spirituality see in this letter and in Ephesians as well a description of the cosmic Christ now this may be a new term for many of us but highlighted in this liturgical hymn is the understanding that Jesus was very much present in the establishment of creation. Scientists highlight that the world in which you and I inhabit is 13.8 billion years old. It didn't start as we read in Genesis some of the the stories. The story in Genesis wants to highlight the relationship that God has with creation and sets it in a parameter of time that we might be able to understand. But as theologians and scientists work closely together, they want to highlight for us the richness of creation and the beauty of creation and as we speak of the Christ the anointed one the one whom we call Messiah is far richer and universal than we in our limitations often give credit to we see Jesus the Christ in a particular human eye, through our particular human eyes, our minds and our hearts. But in this passage from Colossians, we are invited to go deeper and see that 
all of creation, all of what is of the created order, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the galaxies, are all sacred and somehow reflect back to us the very image of God. As this writer continues in this particular letter to the Colossians, he talks about the importance of, of seeing the image of God through the human face of Christ. But he wants to push us harder to see the human face of God in all of creation, all of the beauty and the mystery, and to find enjoyment and pleasure, and then finally to be good stewards of creation, to look after creation. If it is holy, if it is sacred, it is God's creation. And born out of God's creation is the Jesus that we see in our Gospels, Jesus as the human being. After the resurrection, we begin to acknowledge Jesus as the Christ, the universal one who reflects nature, both human nature and all of creation and the galaxies of the genuine care and concern God has for all of us. So Christ is not the last name of Jesus. Christ is a title that invites us to broaden our own understanding of what it means to live and take life in creation and to see all of it in its holiness and its sacredness. Amen. <clears throat> Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that surround us in the beauty of creation, and Christ shall give you light. When Christ our life appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Let us pray. <clears throat> Let us pray and give glory to God, whom from his fullness we have received grace upon grace. For the holy church of God throughout the world, remembering at this time the Anglican bishops across the world who will be traveling to England this summer, to attend the Lambeth Conference of Bishops, chaired by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Justin Welby, that with one heart, we in our faith communities and outside in our neighborhoods and beyond we may rejoice in the word made flesh. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For goodwill in the hearts of all, and on earth peace. Pausing to pray for the Ukraine and Russia, Syria, Afghanistan, the Middle East, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the outcast, and the homeless. For the helpless and lonely and the unloved. We pray for those known to us whose lives are being challenged at this time because of illness and disease, broken relationships, violence, poverty. And I hold to you those known to me who are sick, in hospital or at home, Marilyn, Heather, Bernie, Alan, Della. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Hilda, Saint Luke, Saint Paul, and all the hosts of heaven, let our voices rise to praise God's glory. Almighty God, for as much without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering all our prayers together, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us in our service of morning prayer. I pray that this day, the week ahead, may enrich your own journey of faith and in following Jesus. The church is decorated this morning with some rather eclectic pieces of um, work that I have in my office. And I guess it's the mood that I'm in to uh, have fun in faith and in fellowship and in worship. So I hope you enjoy the um, eclectic pieces of uh, nonsense or icons or pictures. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.